So listen, when the organizers of this conference asked me to come and, and give open today with a talk on women in the workplace, I, I was a little bit stymied at first, to be honest. Okay, so I have been a woman in the workplace now for nearly 30 years. All right, that just freaks me out. But anyway, I've been a woman in the workplace for nearly 30 years, but I come to this now, at least, as an academic, and I'm not a you know, gender studies type of academic. That's not what I do for my research. I don't study gender in the workplace. I don't study work-family balance. I have some very co talented colleagues who do. But that's, that's not who I am. So, uh, so my only expertise in this really comes from my own experience, all right, and a little bit of applied psychology, which we'll get into later on. So I went to the organizers for some guidance, and Katie Wong said to me, well, tell, talk about why we're having this conference, right? Why we're having this conversation. Well, this one was a tough one for me, too, because on one hand, being a woman in the workplace has gotten so much better in the last 30 years. It has gotten so much more dynamic. It has become much more enjoyable, much more rewarding. And, and so that's great, right? But the fact is that if it were done, right, if, we were, if there weren't any gender-related issues left, we probably wouldn't be having this conference and this conversation. And despite all of the strides that women have made in the workplace, there are still huge, huge social and institutional barriers, and sometimes just downright difficult and, and even painful personal decisions and trade-offs that women have to make. Now, let me mention that men also increasingly are finding that they have to make these trade-offs and decisions. So it's not just women, but it is still much more women than men. So, here was my biggest, this is where I confronted my biggest problem. I didn't want to start the day off on a downer, right? I've already seen your faces kind of going eh, a little bit, right? And I didn't want to start the day on a low note with doom and gloom, right? And that sometimes can happen when you spend too much time with statistics. Trust me, as an academic, I know this, right? You spend too much time with statistics and, you know, so I decided, I went back to speech writing 101, and I decided, okay, I'm going to deal with this by finding a joke to start the conversation today, right? All right, so I went looking for a joke. So what do you do when you're looking for something these days? Where do you go? Google. Google, thank you, right? So I went to Google, like any good researcher would, and I Googled women in the workplace humor, right? <laughs> So, okay, apparently you guys are more schooled in this than I am. I thought this was going to be easy, right? So the first search result I got said, women and humor, just what are we so scared of? Okay, this is not what I was going for, right? The second result was a little bit better at first. At least it said, make them laugh, women, men, and humor in the office, okay? So I felt better about this one until I read the first line of the article, which said, the first sentence, women aren't supposed to be funny, but men are. <sighs> what? Okay, so this, this, by the way, I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent here. This led me to some interesting research that I hadn't seen before, published by Judith Baxter at um, Aston University in the UK. This was published back in 2012. Baxter studied the use of humor in senior management meetings in the UK, and she found that more than 80% of women's jokes were met in these meetings with silence. Just like that, right? Meanwhile, about 90% of jokes made with men were greeted with immediate laughter or approval. So, as you can imagine, right, if you expect that, as a result, men were more than three times more likely to use humor when they, when they were leading meetings than women. Interestingly, women were more likely to engage in what's called self-deprecating humor, right, where it's sort of humor at the expense of yourself than men were. Um, and men were more likely to use assertive or sometimes even slightly aggressive what's called display type humor, which is kind of humor to impress, right? Humor to either establish their leadership of the group or even to impress superiors in the group. Okay, 
But interestingly, when women used that type of humor, and frankly, even when they used the self-deprecating type of humor, they were more likely to be viewed as either insecure or abrasive or both. Okay, so to me, this raises a chicken and egg kind of question, right? Is it that women are actually not funny? Or is it that there's this pre-existing perception of women as not being funny that then results in the silence, right? Those of you, a couple of you in here, my former students, we've talked about stereotypes, right? And, and uh, you know, sort of pre-existing perceptions and self-fulfilling prophecies, okay. So that may result in the silence as well. Okay, well this is interesting, but this isn't particularly encouraging, right? And it's still not funny at all. Okay, so I went back to my Google search, right? Yeah, we're getting, this, the levity is going down here, right? The next result, the third result on my list was a cartoon stock site, right? So one of these where you go on and buy a cartoon. Well, they had a paywall, but before I hit their paywall, I found 10 cartoons out of the total of 13 that they said they had on their site related to women in the workplace, okay? So these cartoons, with the exception of one, which was about the glass ceiling, with the exception of one, these 10 cartoons were so unbelievably inappropriate and out of date that I kept looking, I was like, they must have the date on them somewhere. I kept looking at them. Was this written in 1965, right? Like, I just couldn't believe that this was on a website in the 21st century. The one that was not completely inappropriate, which was about the glass ceiling, was actually written from the point of view of men above the glass ceiling. It was a man sitting at a big CEO desk with all these women underneath the desk, and he's going, that's funny, I, I didn't realize it was a glass ceiling, I always thought it was a glass floor. Okay, I didn't find that funny either, actually, but okay. Um, interestingly, all 10 of these cartoons, which were 10 of the 13 about women in the workplace on this cartoon website, were drawn by men, right? Okay, all of them. At this point, okay, so I gotta tell you, at this point I was so depressed that I almost didn't go on. But I noticed that the very next listing in my Google search results was a joke website. And in the title, it said there was a joke by Carol Liefer. Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of Carol Liefer. Has anybody heard of her? Okay, she is a, okay, one person has. She is a, a show business writer. And she's perhaps best known for her tenure at the Seinfeld Show, which I know predates many of you in this audience but not all of us, right? Okay. And she was actually one of their key writers at the height of their success. And she's got a number of Emmy nominations for her work on Seinfeld, as well as some of her other work. She's written for the Oscars. More recently, um, she's written for the show Modern Family, right? She's a very, very successful comedic writer. And she does her own stand-up comedy as well. Okay, so I was encouraged by this. Interestingly though, the joke is probably my least favorite of hers that I've ever read. It was not, it's not actually, in my opinion, that funny, um, but it's the only one that I could find on women in the workplace. Here's the joke, and by the way, this is not particularly a good joke, and it requires comedic timing that I definitely do not have. So, here we go, quote, ladies, women in the workplace, oh, we still have big strides to make. You ready for this? A girlfriend of mine just got a new job. First question the new boss asked her was if she could make a good cup of coffee. Yeah, she stormed right out of that Starbucks. 